Weekend All. I wrap scene with your weekend edition of your Metal Market Wrap Up for the week ending June 5th, 2020. What a week. You know, the markets came in today and we're all looking, and I mean the trade is looking for the jobless rate today, and we're assuming we're going to get near a 19.5%, 20%. If anything, some people were talking 25%. I didn't know of one analyst that was on TV and predicting this market was coming down or in writing that was surveyed in the major surveys. Everybody was looking for this market not to drop this week. And that's what it did. So the rate went from 14.7% unemployed to 13.3. And we're seeing the hospitality sector, the restaurants come back online. It would have been an even better number had the government not gotten rid of 500,000 jobs. But it's a good number. It supercharged the stock market. It, when that number came out, I thought it was a misprint. And I'm looking at it and it's going. And I, I always listen to Steve Leisman when these reports come out. I think his analysis is by far the best for that. And I'm looking at it and going, oh my God, he's trying to figure out the numbers too. And everything lifted. You knew that was at the moment trouble for the gold and silver. You know, the gold primarily, I didn't know that the silver would fall as much as it did, but we had a lost embedded reading. If you looked at yesterday's end of the day wrap ups, we had been looking for the 18 day average. Guess where the market went? When we look at a monthly chart, and I, I use the monthly chart just for a big picture. I have never told anyone to make a trade off a monthly chart. It's just something I like to look at. And it still has that pattern of a lower and low and a higher high, but what it's really done is I'm looking to see how it is in relation to the 18 month moving average of closes. And since the beginning of 2019, when it finally got back and stayed over it at that point, it has been acting very well. We've had attacks at it, but so what? The market's done well. What's restrained the rally, and this is what I do look at it for, is I look at Bollinger Bands on it. Be it a monthly, a weekly, a daily chart, the theory of the algorithm is that 95% of the time the market will stay within the bands, which tells me when the market's staying on the band time after time, first of all, the market's strong. Second, it shouldn't be able to stay over that band very long. That's what happened. So we're getting a pullback. When I'm viewing this for myself, I'm also saying it's going to take an awful lot to break under this last 1490.90. I happen to think that inflation in another year will be a story we all talk about, assuming and it's a big assumption, COVID-19 gets beaten. If you get another breakout of it in the fall, all bets are off as to what can happen. But that could be very beneficial goal too, because without the inflation, people might just scared of the world economy. So I, I put that in the back of my mind and I think about it. The next chart I like to look at from time to time are what are the weekly charts of closes doing? Remember, I'm looking for the longer term right now. And on the close only chart, you broke the pattern. The market had a pattern here of higher lows, higher highs. You were doing very well once you got back over in this March period. And we know that was the COVID period. The market did well and it hasn't broken that pattern. It did so right now this week. So that's a warning sign that this bullish enthusiasm is gone at this point in time. When I take a look at the weekly bar chart with nothing on it, now I start putting the swing lines on this. And the swing line, when you reopen come Sunday night, because that'll be the beginning of a new week, the odds favor that you're gonna have lower highs and the question is, you've already got the lower low. What else do we have? If you look at this week, you have an outside week down. Outside weeks to me are very important, and the outside days are too. Until this high is taken out, could be a trade top. If it's taken out the week after it was set up, in other words, next week, or the week after, I would then call it a bear trap if you take that out. And my theory is, and I teach a lot of this in my charting course, is the market will make a run to the closest moving average above it, if there is one that I use at least, or the Bollinger Band. Let's put on the moving averages. They're all below the market. So I know it's not one of my key moving averages. That's the 18 week, the 100 and the 200. So it would be a Bollinger Band wherever it shows up. And where it's going to show up is right here at 18, 11 and a half. So I know the numbers that I'm now looking at. 
what happened with the swing line? Well, the swing line is down. Therefore, the trend is down as I define it until this high is taken out. That takes you out, in my opinion, of the buy mode on the weekly chart. The bias is up because you're over the 18 week. The two nullify each other. Where could the market go to try to figure out to rebuild? I always tell you, it could be that 18 week. What about momentum? Momentum turned down this week it rolled to the downside. Here's what it was looking like prior to this. I think you'd agree, just going sideways, that's fine. On the weekly charts, I don't look for overbought or oversold. That gets you, I think, into problems in them. So, we could back off into this general number. When I come to the gold-silver ratio, we've had a straight down decline on the weekly basis from 120.22 all the way under 95, and we're still just saying it, sitting here. So silver overall is still good against the gold market. Get over the 18-week average, that's my line in the sand, then I think gold is stronger than silver. When I look at the silver chart, well, we had a big outside week down. Notice where the market went back to. I don't think you should have been surprised at all on a weekly chart that you weren't entering a resistance zone. There's nothing wrong with playing that you'll get through it via the daily charts and so on. But if you're not aware of where past resistance is, you have a problem. Is the chart bearish? No. Unlike the gold, you have the higher lows, higher high. So this is still a bullish formation. Set up a trade top. You know what I'll say, if you take out this week's high next week or the week after, then I think you got a bear trap and wherever the upper Bollinger Band is, I'll tell you right now, it's 1945.50, that could be the upside target. In the meantime, if the market wants to drop, the possibility is you're going for this level, the 18 week and the uh, 100 week average of closes. In the copper market, you got over that, You've, you, first of all, you spent a lot of time coming up to this 18 week average and then you hung here, okay? This is how you hung. Once you got over 247, you threw out, you caught the shorts at that point. And I know you're gonna tell me, ah, oh, they were caught back here and you're right. But now you've got bias up, trend up, momentum up. If the market wants to run hard, could the 267, 268 level, the upper 100-day average in Bollinger Band, be possible targets? Maybe over time. What about support? Back at 240, 70, you're right now at the 255, 15, and you break this bullish idea of mine if you take out 237.55. In the platinum market, nice run to the upside, and if you look, you started correcting last week, pulled back to the 100-day average, and I, I, I'm, I bet I would have said, if the market's gonna try to hold, it's gonna be between these two numbers, and that's basically what you did. Now, the market still has momentum pointing up, trend up, and bias up. This is one of those lines in the sand where I think now the bulls have to decide what do they wanna do. In the dollar index, we broke out to the downside last week. That was the first close you had under the 18-week average, setting up the possibility that if it drops further, first supports the 100-week average, after that the lower Bollinger Band. To make me wrong in that, you'd have to get back over 160 and a half, and that's very important. You always wanna know where you're wrong. No matter how hard you think and how good of an analyst you think you are, you're gonna be wrong just the way it works in, in trading. That's why it's called trading. Trading is different than investing, and in investing you get wrong. But you have to know your zones where you're at. If it continues to break, that was my first objective. It hit it. I wouldn't be surprised if the market wants to play there a little. If it gets another wave of bearishness, the lower Bollinger Band, 96.12. So that, by the way, that's all the news that I look at and how I look at it. So you put it all together, you try to figure out what you want to do, and I try to help you with that. In the mornings at 5.40 in the morning, I record a video that's about 20 minutes long. And what I'm doing for you first thing in the morning, I'm covering what Asia did, what Europe has done to that point. Now, I'm not talking just market prices, reports that come out. Is there anything we should know for the fundamentals that are going to impact the U.S. market? Then I give you all the reports that are coming out that morning and what times they're coming out and what the trade is looking for. 
I do this in such a way that I make, the idea for me at least is to make you understand what's impacting what right at that point in time. Then I break everything I do down into sectors. There's gonna be 40 different charts. I will give you the fundamentals, the technical analysis, where I think you can enter the market, exit, where I'd be wrong in my analysis, and the overall objectives of it. And like a stock market, I break everything into sectors. So you get to look and you can pull on a, a slide bar on the bottom as you on the site and you're looking at this, you're going, oh, I want metals. You just pull to it, you're right into the metal sector. That makes life easy. I do the same identical thing in my spider ETF video, by the way. So if you'd like to look at this, it's simple. Go to our website, go under the word research, tells you how to sign up and do everything and you take it from there. I'm Ira Epstein, see you all this coming uh, Monday. You have a good weekend.